Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're checking out how the SVD holds up after patch 14's recoil rework. This has shifted up the balance between recoil and ergonomics quite significantly, which I think has changed the builds that you'll want to use drastically. So, we can get an SVD from the flea market at level 15, but to guarantee a 100% durability version, you need to get to Prapl 3 first. At 94k from the trailer, it can be tempting to snag one from the fleet, especially when they're down to 60k or so, and of course you can repair these up either with the traders or with a weapon repair kit. However, it is worth remembering that 93 durability is the boundary after which it is possible to get weapon jams from regular shooting, i.e. not from overheating, so some of these damaged guns cut it pretty close to the line. I had a jam in testing at 92.3, which is the first one that I've had in a long time because I normally never use weapons under 93. That said, given the SVD is semi-auto, it's not quite as bad as with some of the other faster firing weapons in Tarkov, so you can get away with it if you're willing to run the risk and shooting at longer ranges where it's a little bit less life and death. In terms of builds, there are two major schools of thought with the SVD and this has switched from one to the other in my opinion. So the first one is low recoil and the second one is going for something with better ergonomics in an amount that matters, which is easier said than done. This whole ergonomics concept is a bit more nuanced with a weapon as heavy as the SVD is, which we'll come to in a second, but in patch 14 the recoil centric build only gets to 92 from the Prapple starting default of 138. The SVD itself has two branches so to speak in terms of how we build it, and to get to the minimum recoil we have to use the upper band and the modernised handguard style, which naturally extends from the starting build. For the purposes of demonstration, this comes with the suppressor, the RK2 foregrip, the modernization kit top rail, and the SVD stock adapter with the Mesa Tactical Crosshair buffer tube inside and a PRS Gen 3 on the back. Clearly, in practice, we'd never actually do this because even adding the most ergonomic pistol grip still hovers the ergonomics around zero, and once you add a sight, a tactical device, and a full mag of ammo, this one comes in a bit over 8 kilograms. But it's still interesting to see how well this one performs, and showcasing it in the hideout, we can see that it is quite a bit better than the stock version, but at what cost? It's still certainly no laser beam at 92 recoil, and one of the biggest problems with the SVD is that to improve the recoil by quite a bit, you need to add the suppressor. This has minus 22 ergonomics on it, and given the gun's low ergo already, you can't do enough to counteract it, meaning that you will end up with at least some of the downsides that comes with low ergo and high weight. One of these in particular is a concept that I refer to as ADS overswing, and this happens when you have a combination of primarily high weight, but also low ergonomics plays a part too. This dramatically changes the effective ADS speed of your weapon as although you may be able to see through the sight, it's still in motion, making placing the crosshair on your target pretty hard until it's settled down. I've talked about this before in some of my older videos, but recently there's been some excellent science going on in my Discord led by Space Monkey, who if you've been paying attention has been helping out with some of the other testing on armour and stuff as well recently, and through in-game data collection and some polynomial fitting has produced a helpful guideline for removing this effect in your builds. How it works is you enter the weapon's weight in row number 3, the weapon's ergonomics in row number 5, and your equipment modifier all added up, i.e. so you go to your helmet and your bag and your armour and you add all of those together, you put them in as a decimal in row number 7 and this produces a number on the chart. The blue line represents the value that you need to be underneath to remove the overswing effect, and as I will demonstrate here, weight has a much more impactful effect on this than ergonomics. Increasing and decreasing ergonomics moves the dot along horizontally, whereas the weight moves our point up and down. If we put in the stats for our min recoil SVD, fully loaded with a 20 rounder, this is 8.92 kilograms with zero ergo and just for a moment we'll ignore our loadout ergonomic debuff. To stop overswing at zero ergonomics, we'd need to have our weapon weight under 2.9 kilograms, which clearly isn't happening with the SVD, so we're going to need to bump up the ergo a bit. Even with a foregrip like the SI Cobra and the most ergonomic stock that you can possibly buy, which is the Viper PDW, we're still miles over the blue line, so we will still see hard overswing on this weapon and would require a weight reduction that we're just not able to get. So for ergo builds in general and with the SVD, unfortunately the suppressor just has to go. Obviously if you're sniping and you don't want to be hurt, then you probably do want the suppressor and you're going to have to take the downsides with it, but if you're playing it in a more assault style like I do, then you can get away without having it on, so long as you smartly rotate. Removing both the suppressor and the threaded adapter, this tucks us just underneath the threshold and when we go to test it, sure enough, we're below where we need to be and we don't see the overswing anymore. Now, unfortunately, this requires an expensive high-end pistol grip to work because we started off with the meta build, so I've been using the other branch of the SVD instead this wipe. 
Rather than using the standard upper band config, swapping over to the Mark 1 and the custom dust cover version of the SVD gets you more ergonomics for less cost. You will have to be level 30 to buy the custom cut dust cover from Mechanic 3, but one of the benefits of this build is that we can utilize the A3 Tactical MVF foregrip with 10 ergo, which is the highest in the whole game. Slapping this on, we're still going to use the adapter and the Viper stock, and we'll change out the pistol grip using another Mechanic 3 part, the Lynx AK series pistol grip adapter. From here, you can use the RK3 because you can get it extremely cheaply sometimes using the AK-74M barter from Mechanic for Marlboro 6 and a military cable where you sell the rest of the gun back. Alternatively, the Tango Down from Skier 3 is just as good and in fact slightly lighter. From here, you just add whichever lasers and sights you want. On my build, I've put on the NC Star Blue Laser and the new SIG Tango 6 T-Scope which comes to 61.5 ergo and 140 recoil. Do note that the recoil is basically the same as the default SVD, but for semi-auto and the new recoil system, it doesn't actually matter all that much. So obviously here, a big source of the weight is the magazine and the ammunition inside it. Altogether, with 20 rounds of 7.62x54R, this part comes to 0.6 of a kilo, which is quite a lot. You can only get these when you reach Prapor 4, otherwise it's an expensive trip to the fleet, although I personally think that it's worth using at least one of these in the gun, even if your backups are tens. If using the SVD as a proper sniper, you probably can get away with using the 10 rounders only, which also changes the equation for overswing a little bit, as you can shave off some extra weight by doing this. But for the way that I play, 20s are certainly the way to go if you can. Finally, on ammo, it's quite hard to go wrong here so long as you start with T46, and the main decision you have to make is whether to use tracers or not. T46 and LPS are practically the same in terms of performance, but if you don't want to get spotted, then LPS is a much better choice. Unfortunately, you can't buy this on the traders anymore, but you can craft it on the level 2 workbench, which is relatively early, and it only takes 4 hours to make 70, or you could just buy it from the flea for between 800 and 1000 rubles a bullet. P46 is on Prapor directly for just under 400 rubles, and is very good for the price. Both of these handily deal with class 4 armour, and are extremely strong in the context of the armour rework. The next bullet in Penetration Power, PS, you get after completing Punisher 6, which is probably what most of you are using the SVD for in the first place, so that's not really very helpful, but you can also get this on the flea too. Given this costs 3 to 4,000 rubles per bullet, it's not one that I would necessarily recommend unless you really know what you're doing with long range sniping, as the extra pen of 45 does help to ensure class 4 helmets won't absorb your bullets at longer range due to the pen drop off over distance. For context, at 200 meters, LPS goes from nearly a sure thing at close range through class 4 to only a 50% chance, which is not what you want when hitting those headshots is hard enough already. PS on the other hand will still hold about 41 pen at 200 meters, keeping an above 90% chance to go through a full durability class 4 helmet. After this there are two more cartridges that are accessible, BT which is 55 pen and is one of my favourite close range SVD bullets as you can buy this from Prapple 4, if you're sitting there at the reset that is. It does sell out extremely quickly so even if you've got the trader levels, unless you set a timer it's unlikely that you'll be able to buy any from him. This is another tracer so it's not necessarily the best for sniping but when used with an assault style SVD like I prefer it carves through almost all armours and even class 6 in a shot or two. The final one you can access outside of finding raid only is SNB which can be made on the level 3 workbench after Tarkov Shooter 7, so if you're a natural sniper this could be one to work towards as it's one of the best bullets in the whole game with better pen than BT but without the tracer effect. The next we're going to check out a few super intense raids now with the SVD and I've really enjoyed my time with it so far doing Punisher 6 on streets and combining it with other quests, so enjoy. Is that the route? Could somebody literally spawn in there? Like I hope not. Like, kind of skeptical. I want to check if the car's here. It is actually here. Hmm. What to do with this information? So I have a quest to leave. I have to survive an extract for therapist out of the car. I extracted out of it last time just for rep, but it was kind of a pain because you don't get the quest complete. How much XP is it? Is it a lot or not? I don't remember. I think they heard me and they're like, 
freaking out. You seized your barrel? I don't think so. Because <laughs> I moved slightly on like min speed on snow. He must have been like, was that, was that a step? I doubt he saw my gun. I doubt it. It is. Oh, there's two. Oh! Right. Um, okay, so we're in Nikita's doodad bar. Fine. Let's see if there's a sniper scav up here, because that was... I still need loads of sniper scavs. Guess not. I do hate you have to jump those. Oh god, an airdrop immediately. May as well have the laser on for going around here just in case there's somebody somebody pops up. You never know. There was definitely a PMC in the other room, though. Where are they going? They're going down to the corner. Probably gone in here. In Klimov Trading Center, I would imagine. Oh. That sounds like a VPO. Someone going into the underground. Can I see from here? Hmm. Not really, fortunately. Only if they come out there and then like walk up this way. there. I think I've got one more kill. Is it player though? 9 out of 15. I think it was. I guess it was a headshot. I mean it didn't feel like a headshot but like should we loot this guy? Probably. <laughs> He's probably on his own running down and up and stuff. Why do you throw those items off? Because I replaced them with these ones. So, like you get XP for like grabbing items and throwing them away. A 
open. Right, let's watch us get instantly killed by something. What's this? Class 4? Class 4? Okay, whatever. Airframe. Don't need these anymore. Right. Keep going! We're going to see if we can loot these boys, the first set of people that we saw. Yes, you do need them. You need to plant them. Does it say on the task? Let's have a look. Uh, people keep reminding me and I keep forgetting. Oh, so you do need to. Stash a bomb being inside the barbershop. Barbershop at Concordia. I can go back into the street and grab the guys. Grab my stuff again. Because I, I just threw it on ne down next to him. So it should be okay. Let me just pop this here for a minute. Now I'm going to get tapped going back for my items, I bet. Mm. Oh, another airdrop. Okay, it's so got gray benches. Okay, so long as I've got them on me, it should be fine, right? Hmm. And then where am I going to go from here? I guess all the way around the outside. Down to theatre. All the way back up, round the back. Yeah, we'll probably do it that way. Let's see what these lot were up to. So, I think... I think I'm just going to chuck this bag down here for a minute. We can explore the rest of this on foot. Reset with the loot and stash later. Well, I kind of got to go with the collapse crane anyway. You know, it's, a, it's fine. All right. As long as possible, damn way. So be it. It'd just be nice to complete this quest. Uh, was this the guy? Built by Dad Bear. M4. Jamal, slowly moving up in drip. Swap out to the Salawe. Mm, class 4. Okay. I could have think I could probably like take this off, maybe. Take the gun. I can't in that bag. This bag is cursed though, so. Right, and then there's this dude. I think he was the one I killed, I think. Yeah, so this is the guy I killed. We got the we got the tag from that dude. Ah, oh, he's got Osprey. Hey, that's four though. Nice M4. It's gonna be a mule session. Get the M4 and strip the HK. Yeah, I was thinking that. I don't know because the yeah the issue is I wonder if I can do this back the other way. Yeah, that's probably better because I think the I think this HK is not as good as this. Is this is this thing gonna murder me? I, I killed scavs near it though, so I feel like it's just gonna like take me out. <laughs> they were fighting somebody over there. These boys. They were fighting somebody over here. I'm pretty sure. Who are they fighting over here? Aha. The powers of observation. Have a little look. Let's drink a... We'll drink a can of Coke and have a think about things. None of that a green flare? Not yet, no. Or two with face shield. Alpha. That's bigger than mine. What's this guy got? Level three. Yeah, and the tour two. Is there supposed to be a green flare on the body by Klimov? No, no, not on, not on this map. Like they will lose, they will lose it much quicker than other stuff, but it shouldn't be like instantaneous. Right. Okay, we are sixty-five kilograms. I think we could make like I could go all the way around the map. We do it. You know what? We're gonna do it. Let's just do. We'll be a hero. Let's use the meldenin as well. We're gonna go plant the stuff. Is that the BTR. God, it is. It straight up murders me. I'm gonna be annoyed. I'm going to take a shortcut through here. 14 minutes. We're going strong. It's going to be alright. Second car. There's not much point because I need to go down here. There's nothing that makes you feel alive like 70 kilograms of loot on streets. Am I right? I think I feel like this is what the game comes to though after you've played it for so long, right? You're just like, well, I could just play it safe and do it in the next raid. Or we could do it now. We could stim up on all the stims and do it now, baby. Oh, it's literally called Barbershop. That, he that helps. Here we go. Aha, good. Thank you, friends. Yeah, see, here you go. Dandy's complete for that. Yeah, so we basically need to get to Collapse Crane. Okay. 
Okay, so 22 energy. Low, but we're not we're not we're not so low that it's a problem. Technically, we could go to check 15 and get CPSU done as well. No, even I'm not crazy enough to do that. I don't think at this point. Did I kill him? I don't know. I gotta get the collapsed crane. If I go, hmm, I'm just thinking like. I don't really have any choice. Will the mule run out? Uh, mule shouldn't run out, no. I do need to eat something. Picnic on the streets. Mm -hmm. I didn't really see them leave. I'm not 100% sure where they went. There you go. Not bad though. Not bad though. Wait, you killed the last guy? I thought I might have killed the guy with the nade. I wasn't sure though. But yeah, apparently I did. Most key spawn, I haven't seen anyone with it. No, I just, it, it's it supposed to spawn in the Klimov Trading Center, but it, it doesn't mean. You need to plant the one in the room before you plant the one in the room. Are you sure? Oh. Nice. What's the likelihood somebody actually comes up here? Not very high, right? I think it's unlikely. Anyway, so, okay, negotiation room, let's go. Now that we're heavy as sin. 50 kilos. I'm going to drop the propane, I think. That's like 5 kilograms. I think I've already done the propane one, I think. Less caps love this area as well. Now, how'd you get into this building then? How you find the SVD? Um. I wasn't getting on with it very well. And now I'm doing okay with it. Might just die to the side here. Wait, how the hell did you even get in here then? Through the back here? Oh, it's this building. Oh, it's this one. Yeah, this is really open, this area. Been here enough to know. Been shot at from up there as well before in the past. Right, can you get in any... Do you go in any of them? Does it matter where you go? Oh, is that the part of it? Okay. Uh, we have to find the negotiation room. Are you come in and go right or something? Did that one? Let me just triple check. There's no one down here. There's like blood in here, which doesn't bode well. Okay, someone's come here before. Necessarily a problem. Yeah, if you, I don't know the spawns. So is that it, right? After this, I guess we can just go. Oh, there's a lion. <coughs> Deep use not worth much now, right? I can't remember what, like what is and what isn't worth anymore. Like some stuff is like randomly valuable. 
Right. Okay. So... The other stuff that we had was... Like, check 15. I don't really feel like I want to go in. We, we could go in late, like really late. We're not that far from check 15. We wanted to go and try and do CPSU, but... Feels like maybe one for another raid. If it's not that expensive negotiation key, then I'll just like I'll just buy it. Like, what are the spawns? I don't. I... <gasps> ah! What the hell? I am amazed that I'm still alive. I can't believe I can't believe we're still alive. <sighs> Honestly, that's astounding. Jesus Christ. My heart! Today's raids have been actually insane for that. Like, I'm just constantly getting jump scared the whole time. Didn't hear anything? Yeah, no, I mean, me neither. Holy, holy moly. Fast stuff with the SVD. Yeah, I'm like, I'm slowly getting more up to speed with the left lean. Good God, man. Wait, you had a DVL. Maybe this is why I'm still alive. Oh my word. Oh my God, guys. I'm, I'm actually like, I'm actually stressed. I'm actually stressed after these raids. Crane is easy. Crane sucks though. Fire, clutch crane. Well, you know what? We have to kind of go to crane anyway, so... Let's do the old muley boys. I think this justifies a mule SJ. Here we go, friends. Right, let's do it. BTR gamble for the content. That's definitely not worth it. Now, as long as I don't die to scavs here, then it should be okay. I actually detest this extract. Because it's, like, really finicky as well. And, like, exactly where you can stand. It's very easy to cancel it by accident. You have to stand in, like, a very specific place. It's, like, really annoying. It should be way wider. It be way wider. Nice! Only 3k XP for that raid. Feels bad, doesn't it? Uh. Guys? The second guy was his teammate. The first guy, actually, the one I thought I whiffed, yeah, there was two in the room. There was two in the room. Where was the audio? I don't know. Did you clap them? No. Like, the, literally, I, I fired at the first guy, ran back into the room to, pro to pop an adrenaline, thought I whiffed, and then I thought I fought him a second time with the left-hand peak. What headset were you using? I was using Contact Force, i.e. the best headset in the entire game. Anyway... As usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.